China has shocked the world by unveiling its new sixth generation fighter jets. And right now, the United States, claiming to be the most powerful country in the world, only has fifth generation. We are talking advanced stealth that can elude most radars, hypersonic weapons, and maybe even hypersonic flight, AI systems to coordinate with drones, potential laser systems for offense and defense, and look at the rest of the list. According to the press, these new sixth generation Chinese planes are meant to counter our F-22 Raptor and our F-35 Lightning II, two planes that we use as an example of our air supremacy. Have we finally been checkmated by China? No. Number one, the F-22's first flight was in 1997. So, okay, well, this is about 30 years old. Number two, the F-35's first flight, I believe, was 2006. So 19 years old. And it's true, the United States hasn't launched any sixth generation aircraft because they don't need to right now. China has a problem with showing a lot of innovation at scale. So these new fighter jets that China released that are sixth generation, there may be two or three of them at most, but there are several hundred F-22s and F-35s. And you know what this lack of sixth generation aircraft produced by the United States reminds me of? Our lack of hypersonic missile systems, which were broadcast all over the world for several years. My fellow Americans were constantly talking about how we couldn't stand a chance against China and Russia because they had the hypersonic advantage. And then the beginning of 2024, we successfully test the AG 183 Arrow and our new Dark Eagle. Both of them can go past Mach 10 and they have a higher degree of accuracy than anything Russia or China can produce. And it looks like we just pulled it out of thin air because we did. The US shelved its hypersonic technology around the 1970s and the 1980s until it became useful to start exploring it again. And while China and Russia were focusing on hypersonic missiles, we've been working on hypersonic aircraft since the 1960s. And right now, our most promising model is our SR-72, which is yes, the follow-up of the SR-71 Blackbird. And I bet you money that our SR-72 will kick the crap out of anything China can fling at us. For the sheer fact that China is at least five years behind the West in chip making. It's the same reason why Huawei released that beautiful phone that looked like it was more advanced than anything we could produce, but they can't make too much of it because again, they don't have the scale. They also don't have the technology to make the most advanced semiconductors that are required for this. That belongs to the West. ASML to be exact. ASML is a Dutch semiconductor company that makes lithography machines. And it's these lithography machines that design the most advanced semiconductors that we need. And China can't get their hands on how to use it. And it's because the US and the rest of the West just won't let them. As soon as the United States opened their capital markets to China in the early 1980s, we knew that all China really wanted to do was supersede everyone to become the leading power on the planet. And that is a delicate game when you're a strong economy and you know the country you are helping wants to be your rival and in fact wants to dethrone you. You know that as their economy grows, they will put more R&D into military tech and eventually that military tech will be risen to potentially challenge yours. But the advantage that America has over China is we still have the smartest people on the planet wanting to come here to do their work. My opinion is that China knows this too and right now, I believe they're not looking to topple the US for anything in particular, but they do want to maintain a strong sphere of influence in this region. And there's a chance that China is showing their new technology not to scare America or even Japan, South Korea, Australia. Maybe China wants to intimidate the Philippines and Taiwan. Or maybe, and this is kind of out of the box, China wants to intimidate Russia and North Korea. China is not happy with Russia and North Korea's cutesy wootsy relationship where North Korea is supplying Russia with weapons and troops. And of course, Russia is supplying North Korea with just food and oil. China expects to have diplomatic supremacy with North Korea and no one else can step in. Russia kind of threw that in their face. China through private channels has expressed discontent with Russia's long war against Ukraine and they do want them to wrap things up, but it doesn't look like Russia can. China looks at North Korea like a charity case and Russia like a gas station that owes them some land. And their government knows that their future for now lies with strong trade relations in the West and of course other Southern countries. Russia and now North Korea are acting as destabilizing influences in China's trade and basket of needs. And maybe while Russia and North Korea know they stand no chance against the West, they have to know that they now stand no chance against China. I am the Geo Hussar. It's just another three weeks until TikTok gets banned. So remember to follow me on the other platforms. Thanks for watching.